There we go. Right page. Okay. So go on a bit. on my keyboard right here. Hello. Oh, hello. Hi. Hi, how are you? Good, how are you? I'm good. You ready to read some awesome poetry? Yeah. Um, <laughs> this setup may be a little bit weird because um, I set up the keyboard last night and I've been fucking around just with some music, so. Oh, nice. You make music too. <laughs> I don't know That's if awesome. I play like properly or whatever that I learned like the basic like piano stuff when I was a kid. So I'm like, I have oh. really nothing else to do. So that is well. Like, <laughs> try to learn a new skill or a new song. Mm -hmm. you know. Yeah, I know since this whole uh, COVID-19 lockdown stuff, I've started playing music too again. So I guess there's good things that have come out of it, right? <laughs> yeah, that's cool. What do you play? Pardon me? What do you play? Uh, I play the ukulele. <laughs> oh, that's really cool. Yeah. <laughs> I'm a little bit rusty, but I'm getting back into it. So it's mm -hmm. nice. <laughs> yeah. Um, so yeah, if you, do you want to start out? Sure. Do you want me to go first? Or I guess I can like, move back my camera a little bit. Yeah, and I okay. Instagram started working again for me and I was like, Kept crashing. I was like, no, not the time. Hello, everybody that's joining you. I'm Ash, by the way. I don't know why. I know I haven't really joined anybody's lives before. So this yeah, is the first time for me. This is really cool. It's like your first little, like, hey. <laughs> yeah, I'm so excited to do this. Um, but I have my first phone pulled up if you want to get started. <laughs> um, Sure. I mean, I think we have like a longer list than we did yesterday, so yeah, we can read mm -hmm. and chat a little bit. Okay, sounds good. So the first one I have pulled up is called Walking on Thin Ice, uh, and it is by Shades and Sayings. Um, I know that you probably know some of their actual names. <laughs> I'm, I don't not actually know. Sure. I just call them Shades. Oh. <laughs> okay. Um, so here we go, and I do apologize for my social awkwardness and my rambling. Oh, okay. uh, <laughs> trembling between extremes of life and death, on thin or on threads of silver veins, the crack is everything when I am at the vortex of darkness, walking on thin ice, pacing alone in bony fashion with my rebel soul dead inside. What do you do when your voice is on the line and prejudice outside, hoping to trace my joy drowning in the liquid state of the frozen moon, derailed by being extant now on the frontier of being salivant soon, feeling blue, discovering wicked ways to sink or swim. Will this ever end? The big freeze of a solitary whim. <clears throat> Mental health matters to me as I have been through enough. I am walking on thin ice, but on my way to getting tough. <laughs> well, yeah. That was a good reading. <laughs> I like that one. I like the the, the concept of, um, where did it go? Hmm. The, the liquid state of the frozen moon. <laughs> yeah, the imagery. Mm -hmm so well yeah it's very good and the vortex of darkness and walking on thin ice and yeah it's a good one yeah so um talk to me a little bit like how does mental illness and mental health like affect you in your life <laughs> well i have multiple diagnoses <laughs> um my kind of mental health issues started uh, when I was a child uh, with PTSD. Um, I've been through you know, a lot of really dark trauma and stuff uh, throughout my life. So 
uh, yeah, I kind of started with PTSD and then, uh, and then I got diagnosed with uh, generalized anxiety disorder and OCD. And then uh, just this um, around Christmas time, 2019, I got diagnosed with having both borderline personality disorder and uh, bipolar disorder type two. So I got quite a few different things going on. Um, and I'm just kind of uh, right now trying to find my footing with this borderline personality disorder and doing all of the researching that I can. If you noticed, I'm sharing a lot of stuff that I'm learning as I'm going. And yeah, that's kind of what I deal with on a daily basis. What about, what about you? Um, so thank you for sharing that. That's really um, cool to know that it affects sort of everyone and not just like, you know, you like never really know who it affects until you ask people, I guess. And then you're like, oh, yeah. like totally not alone. Um, so, uh, yeah, there's so many people. <laughs> sorry, um, so I, um, depression, anxiety, when I was a teenager, um, I actually dropped out of high school uh, halfway through my sophomore year. I was experiencing a really, really bad depression and we didn't really know what it was. Um, but yeah, sort of depression when I was a teenager and it like led to a bunch of self-harming and suicidal thoughts when I was a teen. Um, and then later didn't realize it, that I had an eating disorder um, and just generalized anxiety, all of that, um, followed by social anxiety. Uh, and so it's sort of been just a handful of diagnoses again, but I guess I really haven't like felt comfortable enough because I've been in and out of therapy since I was like 15, um, mm. on various medications trying to get it figured out. Um, but I finally feel like I'm at a point in my life where I can like start to heal from some of the trauma that occurred during those years and even before then. So, yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, thanks for sharing that. Like you said, it's like, we're not alone, right? There's so many people out there like us that are that struggle with this kind of stuff. That's why I'm so excited to get involved with lives like this, because we got to have these conversations, right? Yeah. Like, there's so many people out there that struggle. And it's nice to connect with people that can kind of get it, right? Yeah. Um... I was going to say something and then I completely forgot. Um, <laughs> that to me. happens to me. Yeah. I'm like, uh, train of thought derailed, destination no. <laughs> It's all good. It'll come back. <laughs> yeah. So, uh, yeah, it's really great to have you here and talk about things and share poetry about it because I feel like art is like one of the main ways that we can make, make people understand. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. I'm all for having those honest conversations. I feel that uh, mental health really needs to have more of them. So <laughs> yeah. I know I share a lot of ugly parts of, of it, but. <laughs> oh my God, same though, same. <laughs> but they need to be said, right? Definitely, yeah. And I think mm -hmm. it definitely like shapes our experiences and who we are and who we become mm -hmm. from that. Exactly. And I also feel like and it's people also, who have experienced mental health issues at, in some way, they have a very different perspective on life and mm -hmm. bring insights to conversations and just experiences that people who haven't experienced those things, they might not get really. Mm -hmm. No, that's exactly, that's exactly right. Like it's so hard for people that don't have mental health issues to really understand what it's like right because we are just completely unique people right yeah so <laughs> if they've never experienced it themselves it's hard for them to understand even if we try our best to articulate it you know so I feel like doing this kind of stuff and I don't know people learn by seeing does that make sense <laughs> yeah I get that yeah mm -hmm. Um, I'm going to go ahead and read my first piece. Okay. I have 
one dye D a color for you. And the caption says, I think this gives some insight. It says, is this fiction or my subconscious mind running on fumes? Is it even poetry? Am I a haunted house? Honestly, not quite sure where this came from, but I guess I needed it out of me. Um, I will say that someone's May writing prompt took me to a place I hadn't expected to go. So, not titled. Loneliness is a hollow home with pins dropping like hail as the coffee pours. Loud. Everything is loud in the nothing of clanking pins and trickling caffeine and a woman whose breath hisses under dinging and splatters of all the deafening nothing that make up a haunted house. Loneliness is shuffled feet across creaking floorboards because loneliness is built within old homes that have not been tended to in quite some time. Teetered knees crack with each mundane move of the woman whose eyes do not break from their gaze into the nothingness of everything she cannot unsee in diluted hallways constructed by ghosts of a full, em full home now empty. But a story lives here still. Tinder tales are told through window panes nailed shut because loneliness does not let the light in. A woman gazes into planked glass pa panels as shaky hands scratch ruffled hair that stays unclean because pipes will rattle once the water's on and ears will pop when rumbles and clanks squeal through concrete walls that long to scream the truth of how loneliness got here in the first place. Sips of coffee turn to gulps of heat, blazing down a throat that has been burning since growing ghosts set this lonely house on fire, a flame. Ashes of the voice once used lay amongst the dust that has now settled within the frame of boasting beams that know very well what it entraps here. Listen for the shushed mouths and shrieking silence, and you will hear the recount of how rugs got pulled out from under a, a meek body that shattered into pieces on that very rotted floor. Catch the whoosh of the rug as it smacks on top of scattered fragments of the woman's remains, and you'll swear you hear the cries as it crashes down. Loneliness is an explosion of echoes and an overload of ominous narratives that blare on repeat as they wrestle through knock-down doors and tore-up cabinetry. Loneliness is a woman who's stuck inside a haunted house consumed with pockets of possibility that are sealed and tucked far from a lonely woman's reach. Loneliness is a purgatory. Purgatory is a haunted house. A haunted house is a woman, and a story lives here still. That was great. <laughs> that was a great read. I think your camera might be uh, kind of glitching out a little bit. <laughs> oh no. <laughs> that was really good. That's a very good piece. Yes. That's awesome. Yeah. See, I love, I love paces that kind of make me speechless. <laughs> Does that yeah. make sense? Like, I don't know. That was a really great read through and that was a really great piece. <laughs> it was really, I like the idea of loneliness being like more than just something you feel like loneliness as a ghost, loneliness as something that comes and robs you mm -hmm. of sort of your awareness of things. The piece yeah. was really great. Um, I think I'm going to move on. To... Yeah, pardon me? Yeah, I'm going to move on to the next one. <laughs> Sorry. Yeah. I don't know if it's my internet yeah. that's kind of slow, maybe, but okay. Oh, that's all right. So this one is from PBJ in the PM. I do enjoy that name. Mm -hmm. uh, and it's called My Mind. So here we go. I climb mountains again, but only in my mind. I run against the wind 
but only in my mind. I paint again, but only in my mind. Things have changed, but that is fine. These things are, or these are things that I fell out of love with, and I am focused on what I still love. Deep in her mind, I dive deep into her mind. I dig, I swim, I fall, I drowned. All the shit I used to be scared of and still am, but really only in my dreams. Dreams I only have when I'm away from her. Because I faced these, those fears, I never closed my eyes. And maybe that's why they come back when I close my eyes. I stood my ground and I took my losses. And I built on losses until I had and wanted nothing. Now I got this perfect family that I keep feeding. And that's weird because I have, was never one to feed my fears. And I was never one to hold on to nothing, but I am holding and I am afraid. I can't imagine a life of facing my fears. I can't imagine a life without her. I have finally met that fear that I can only face in my mind. And I love that it is the, the one love that I can't fall out of love with. So I climb mountains again. I run against the wind and I paint with a pen all the ways that things have changed. <laughs> yeah, I like that one too. Good job. P, B, and J. <laughs> I like it. <laughs> that was really good. Also, um, I think, so we went through the tags. You said this is a throwback. I have no clue what y'all are reading. Um, so I think, so we went through the tags and I guess this was in the tags. So. For me, it has been that something that um, Andy curated for us. But anyway, yeah, really good piece. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Yay, I do new friends. That was really good. Um, yeah, so I'm going to read. Not that one. <laughs> Let's do and Rose poetry next. Yay, this is called How She Sat With Me. Um, I'm going to read the caption first because I also think that it, it gives some insight on to the in the piece. So, mm -hmm. May is Mental Health Awareness Month. I live with multiple diagnoses. I live with PTSD, OCD, depression, anxiety that are not defined by my diagnoses. At times, it has been easier for me to laugh at my pain than to acknowledge the just it or the destruction it has caused. Finding kindred spirits who have also experienced trauma makes this journey more tolerable. When I was in treatment for my eating disorder, there was a kinship among the three women there. We would have group and then immediately go chain smoke and laugh together, releasing the tension and bonding in our journey to healing. I had some very important people in my life that I can be myself around. I can be vulnerable and safe. They see past my emotional scars and struggle. They see me as a whole person and can sit with me with that perspective. So this is called How She Sat With Me. She said she dreamt of me, of the ways I have died a thousand deaths, laid across my kitchen floor, chopping pieces of me, feeding hungry loved ones, sweeping up crumbs with my hair. I sat inside those words, within the narrative she wove, laughing through sips of coffee, pretending not to see the bandages on her wrist, or the circles beneath my eyes, and we laughed some more, looking down at our missing limbs. And that hits hard. Mm -hmm. that hits hard. Wow. That's a deep one. That's a deep one. I know I almost cried when I read that. <laughs> yeah. It's a, yeah. That's a deep one. It reminds me of my friend 
It's so weird that like when you have an eating disorder, you you bond in the weirdest ways, and mm -hmm. that everyone there are the kindest people that you will ever meet. And I think it's weird because we're all sort of like dealing with things that are trying to kill us. Um, mm -hmm. And yet there's still a weird sense of like hope and companionship in that, you know, like we're going to struggle together. But if you die, I swear I'm going to kill you. Mm -hmm. I can't say that I know what it's like to have an eating disorder, but I mean, I can't imagine that is anything easy to deal with. So, yeah, I, <laughs> that's a really deep piece. I'm still kind of feeling it. <laughs> yeah. Mm -hmm. And that's what art is, right? <laughs> yeah. It makes you feel And that's like one, of, one of the beautiful things about, uh, having mental illnesses that it tends to make us quite talented and uh you know very passionate especially with writing and painting and and stuff like that so i love that yeah. you know we That's can turn beautiful. something if you can see it very well that painting over there is um oh. let me go get it it's a fucking yeah, you paint too. look at you go girl <laughs> everything okay <laughs> So I did this in, I think it was 2017, the only art exhibition that I ever partook in, um, this, oh, that's beautiful. Picture, I call her Rain Girl, and this piece is called Rain Girl Meets Euthynia. Oh, that's beautiful. Thank you. And <laughs> Euthynia is like the happiness during a depressive episode. Mm -hmm. And I was going through a pretty bad depressive episode when I was painting that. Mm -hmm. um, and so I sort of wanted to to take the light that comes after, or like when you resurface for just long enough to catch your breath and see that you're still alive. Mm -hmm. so. Well, it's very beautiful. And I am, like I was saying, it's just a, a gift, I think, that we have when we have mental illnesses to be able to take our darkness and make something beautiful like that right Definitely. and same with our with our poetry and our words and it's a, it's a gift so there's not always darkness in in mental illnesses right yeah <laughs> i mean it sucks most of the time a... but <laughs> yeah anyways i guess it's my turn right mm -hmm. It's my turn to read. I will move on. I am uh, reading Baby Bird 1004. Um, I don't. Is she in here? I think I saw her in here. Yeah. Um, I don't think this one has a title. I'm not seeing a title. Um, but here we go. Um, I'll just go. <clears throat> I can't sleep again. I travel with pen. I don't like to type. I never get the spelling right. <clears throat> I carry multiple books that I wrote each year. They all tell my story. I'm sure it's boring and honestly hard to hear. I will become an alias of myself somehow to finally share my secrets, to finally teach people how. How honesty is all I have given and all I have to give. I have not changed myself, and if I did, I apologize. I don't deserve to live. I tried four times to end my life. Successful, I was not. Each failure taught me something, but I stared at the mirror and forgot. Forgot the lessons, forgot my pride. <laughs> Never want to hear I'm strong because I don't see why. I wander in my ro Rolodex of mind. I wonder what I can leave behind. I'm not too, I'm not quick to let go, but when I do, it is for keeps. I wanted something to cherish, something to keep. I lost the hope four times, you see. I don't think five will come, but I also hope I will not see. That's another really deep one. As you can see, I had a hard time reading that. <laughs> That's a deep one. I've been 
suicidal many more times than I can count. <laughs> so I totally, totally get those feelings. <laughs> so that was definitely, that one got me right here. I feel that one. <laughs> I'm glad you are still here. Yes. And same, same with baby bird. I'm glad that you're still here and I'm glad that you're still here. <laughs> it's, it's not fun to have those, uh, those tendencies and those suicidal thoughts. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So that's another deep one. Very good writing. <laughs> yeah. It really is. Yeah. It's, it's mm -hmm. very, very relatable, unfortunately, but very. Yeah. Like it's unfortunate that there are so many people that can relate to this, but that's kind of the point in sharing it, right? Is because there's so yeah. many people that can relate. Mm -hmm. It is so good that that's out there you know yeah i mean that kind of stuff is definitely hard to talk about <laughs> and you get there's a lot of terrible stigma that you're met with when you do reach out and uh you know tell people the people that you love that you're suicidal i know i've been through it a lot <laughs> it's hard to it scares other people too right yeah um so i hold on uh my i've experienced suicidal thoughts like recurrent uh pretty much constantly since i was 15. um luckily like since i started my new medication i haven't experienced them hardly at all but um my therapist when i started seeing her she was like what's your history like what and i was like oh you know so far in suicidal thoughts and she made a point to say that it's totally normal. Like we need to normalize the idea of having suicidal thoughts so that when mm -hmm. we are experiencing them, we know what to do. Um, mm -hmm. And I was like, holy shit, you're right. Cause like, I don't tell anyone because bad shit happens <laughs> when I tell people that I'm like yeah. suicidal. And she's like, no, I get that, but it's normal. Like this does happen. And it's not obviously not normal in that you want to kill yourself, but yeah. it's normal that this happens. And mm -hmm. when it does happen, you are aware of it and you've experienced this enough times to know what to do. And mm -hmm. yeah, and that's why it's scary that it, it happens. Yeah. And that's why therapies like DDT are like real important. I know uh, because of this COVID stuff, I haven't actually gotten to go to any classes or anything like that yet, but I am reading a DBT workbook right now that, you know, talks a lot about, you know, gives you advice and tips on what you can do when you find yourself in crisis, because like you said, you know, it's, we need to normalize it, right? And especially for people, I know myself personally, <laughs> Because of my borderline personality disorder, I tend to be suicidal a lot. Like, it, like you said yourself, it's kind of almost like an everyday thought that I have have to fight with, right? Mm -hmm. So if we are experiencing this all the time and we can recognize it, and then we can also learn these things that'll help us cope with it instead of always having to take ourselves to the crisis unit or you know, there's nothing wrong with having to do that, but we can learn these skills ourselves too, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> mm -hmm. The Freedom Letter Rain said, my therapist is doing film sessions. That's great. That's really great that you can still do that. I've been seeing my therapist weekly on Fridays um, via Zoom, which is really fucking weird because like... <laughs> I have legit done therapy while I was still in bed just having woken up because um, like sometimes I'll forget because it's at 10 a.m. and like I don't try to be awake before 10 a.m. most days um, but in the were event that I like like actually actually overslept in this session because I didn't have to get up and go like get in the car and go to the place and i was like sorry mm. it's time is not real right now 
Yeah, it's kind of hard to get motivated. I think a lot of people are finding right now to to do that. I know my therapist is doing stuff over the phone and Zoom and and stuff too, but I've only had one so far one appointment with her just in general because in Manitoba where I live it's a really slow process to get any sort of help. Like the waiting lists are just so incredibly long and so I've been waiting really for like six, seven months to, to get help. Like since the last time I was in a crisis center and oh. yeah. And I've only had one meeting with her since then. So oh. It sucks that it takes so long. <laughs> I hope that changes for you soon. And that you name. Yeah. Well, there's, it's just like in Manitoba in itself, we're just really far behind. Wait, you're in Canada? I am. Yeah. <laughs> I didn't know that. <laughs> yeah, I'm in Canada. I'm right in the middle of Canada, basically. There's not a lot to see here. It's pretty flat. <laughs> That's cool, actually. Oh no. And in the US and nothing exciting happens here. So when I hear people are from like Canada or England, I'm like, really? <laughs> I know. That's why I like Instagram so much. I'm just meeting so many people and all over the world. It's awesome. I love it. <laughs> yeah. Mm hmm. Okay, I think it is my turn. Cool fans. Also, because this caught my eye, and just because I like getting off topic a lot, because why not? Um, <laughs> why not? This eh? Book. I'm reading this book right now. The body keeps the score. Um. So I'm a psych major. And I want to do uh, pediatric trauma counseling. Or oh. Awesome. One of the two. Anyway, I'm mm -hmm. reading this book and it is so fucking good. <laughs> it is really Is it good? good? You'll have to send me send me the title of it in a message. I'll have to check yeah. it out. It is really fucking heavy. Um, <laughs> it's really intense. I mean this guy basically developed um the trauma research centers in the US. Um and it's it's fucking amazing. <laughs> so. I'll have to, I'll have to check it out. Yeah, and it, well, that's really great that you're, uh, you're going to work with kids. Yeah, I, I want to. That's what I want to do. I know the guys. That's you know they're going to get a job. They're like, it's a lot of school, and I'm like, you know, Dad, after this whole fucking pandemic, we're going <laughs> to need trauma counselors. Okay. Uh, you know, kids' mental health is just as important as ours is. I have three kids of my own, uh, and because I feel, <laughs> and maybe I'm wrong, uh, that I've gone undiagnosed with my borderline personality disorder for so long, I feel like I might have passed on some of my unhealthy uh, traits to them. Um, yeah, so I know how important, you know, children counselors are and i know that's something that we lack here in in manitoba too it's hard to get them help too <laughs> yeah i also feel like um when i was a kid there wasn't really like i had the support that i needed but it could have been so much better mm -hmm. and yeah like i remember my parents uh didn't really take my depression seriously because they grew up in a time where their parents didn't and then you know it was kind of and all the crappy things that happened back in the day getting thrown into you know institutions and stuff for crazy things yeah <laughs> you know the thing we have come a really far away but yeah there's not a lot out there for kids so that's awesome that you're doing that <laughs> we really have um thank god Mm -hmm. I can't imagine like still experiencing so much like all of these especially like I guess the newer diagnoses like I don't know um you know how like dissociative identity disorder used to be called multiple personality disorder and mm -hmm. all of these like subcategories of uh <laughs> Dissociative disorder. Oh, it probably gets confusing. <laughs> Depersonalization, derealization, or something, DPDR, like all of these things that we now have names for, they didn't have mm -hmm. a clue what they were back then. And I can like only imagine having to 
experience all of that and feeling like or knowing that there's something wrong with you but not being able to like get help for it it mm -hmm. must have been really kind of isolating and frustrating mm -hmm. and i remember like like i said my mental health struggles started when i was a kid and if i had had the help that's available now when i was going through all my everything then perhaps i wouldn't be you know so mentally ill right now <laughs> Yeah, early intervention. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But yeah, you're going to read again? Yes, I am. Yay. I'm ordering pizza tonight. Oh, man. By the weirdest people. Wait a minute. It's Tuesday. It is Tuesday. Okay. <laughs> Sorry, my brain's like, what <laughs> day is it? Why? <laughs> um that's nice i get free food tonight <laughs> what the things you get excited about when you're broke something? simple joys yeah okay so this is called she's dead by freedom rider rain yay okay. yay she's dead but only today. It's a two pill kind of afternoon. One just wouldn't suffice. I need to go comatose, but only today, when all is well, that I can't feel it. So I don't want to feel anything if I can't feel good. I'll wrap myself in the numbness and play dead. You know, like when we were kids, but not. She's dead, with sticky, prickly thorns in her side and broken glass at her feet. I hate this feeling because I let everyone down. Where is my shine from yesterday? It'll come back. Amongst the weeds and thistles and twine that encases me on this day. Hopefully, two pills will do. But if not, then I'm lost in the moon monotony of the anxiety and it's murdering me and dismembering my soul one piece at a time. She is dead. The girl that makes jokes and brings laughter to all who surround her. Maybe I'm just sick. Maybe I'm just sleepy. Maybe I've just lost me for one day. And tomorrow my pain will dissipate. But as for now, she is dead. And I am a lonely mortician trying to revive her instead of going six feet deep. Maybe I had a bad dream. Maybe this is the dream. Maybe nothing is as it seems that somebody, anybody, place your lips to my blue mouth and wake me the fuck up, please. Wow. Oh, fucking good. Uh, that was a good fucking poem. <laughs> um, yeah, and I can totally relate to that one as well. <laughs> yeah yeah such so there's some like really great great poets on here i love it yeah. <laughs> that's another one of those that it's just like i don't really have any words it's just a really great piece of art <laughs> Today, and that's really what, kind of what you're going for when you're writing this kind of stuff right something that'll make people kind of think and feel something, I, right? I really love the style too. It's very simplistic storytelling. Holy shit, that was a big squirrel. I don't <laughs> have ADHD, I don't have ADHD, I swear, but like I do get very <laughs> distracted easily. I'm like a crow is what I am. I'm like shiny, like oh, oh. I like crows, crows are the best. <laughs> Dude, same. This, I don't know if you saw the back of my sweatshirt, I was talking no, about it. Somebody. There's like a. You should show me. Show me. Ooh. Oh, wow. That's awesome. I love it. I fucking oh, love man. it. It's like <laughs> very dark and aesthetic. Very me. But yeah. Mm -hmm. um, I have a funny story about a crow just because it's. Why the fuck not, right? Um, <laughs> so, since moving up to Seattle, um, I grew up in 
Southern Arizona. Mm -hmm. And the most wildlife we had there was like javelinas and coyotes and just random desert animals. Um, and so since coming up here, I've noticed a shit ton of crows and ravens. <laughs> Um, and so I, my sister, she gets freaked out by birds a lot. They just scare her. And so as a joke, I would be like, every time I saw a crow, I'd be like, hi, friend. And I'd go <laughs> to it and stuff. And my sister, like, she is convinced that, like, they know me. Um, <laughs> like, no, like, they're, they're after you. Like, like, they're your uh, friends. And she's like, no, 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 no. And so, like... Last summer, I was awake until like five or six in the morning for God knows why. But <laughs> I saw the sunrise, and I was taking pictures of the sunrise, and um, there was a crow hanging out, like hanging upside down from the roof, looking into my window and like staring at me. Mm -hmm. <laughs> oh, hey! And it was like. Oh. <laughs> yeah, I have a friend. That would make my little heart happy. I am obsessed with crows and ravens and all of that kind of stuff. I went to the beach the other day and I don't know if they're nesting here or something, but there was like six or seven of them and they got, let me get super close to them. It was awesome. So <laughs> I love <cute>. them. <laughs> yeah, so I guess uh, I could probably move on and read the next piece. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Oh, this one is from Miss or M. Rose Poetry. And um, it is called A Man Named Trauma. <clears throat> Here we go. I married Trauma, betrothed as a child. A dowry was paid with my sister's life. Gift given by my father's addiction, a cake iced in with pharmaceutical cocktails. The first night we lay in bed, he licked my lips, tasting my fear, told me he would never leave me. I couldn't escape, escape the tendrils of his grasp. His morning coffee, freshly shed tears. He would sit, stirring slowly, reading me stories from the paper. Neglected child grows up with severe attachment disorders. Mother who shouldn't be a parent. Never good, never going to be good enough. You are always fucked up. He built our house with cold steel walls and padded the carpet with eggshells. Our bed was lined with metal spikes that kept me up at night. His body weight on my chest, I couldn't breathe. I would scream, I couldn't breathe. And my body would shake, I couldn't breathe. And he, and he would play videos of my sister dying, of my dad leaving and coming home, of my mom brokenhearted, my grandma dying, my cousin dying, the neighbor who used his hands to steal my innocence from me the night we stuck, snuck out of the window to run from my inebriated dad. His hot breath, a piercing promise in my ear, I will be with you forever, the parasitic lover who feasted on my inability to leave. He held the people I love hostage. There was no remembering them without him. Curled up inside his formidable hole, his touch searing my skin so I could see my sister's face, hear her voice, speak her name, remember her life. I dream of freedom, escaping, tearing flesh from my heart to trade for a life without him. I just can't leave her behind quite yet. Yeah, there's that one. I was trying to read if there was any info on that, but that was a really good, powerful piece too. It really was. Wow. So good. Marie, her name is Marie. That's the only one that has a name on here. <laughs> that was really awesome, Marie. Good job. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, I have the next piece ready. I think it has like 13 minutes left. 
is this our? Okay. So this is Outlawed Poet um, called She Is My Addiction. She is an endless siren, a constant worry, dragging me willingly, holding my hand down the well-lit path to destruction. She is my personal demon, holding the torch, whispering temptations on loop while sowing the seeds of sin. She takes many forms and teach each time she gives she takes a little more, quenching my thirst, but leaving my stomach sobbing. I find her in bottles and glasses and small pretty bags. I put her in my mouth and up my nose. She begs me to find her, and I always do. She's wrapped in paper glowing in smoke. She's a temptress like no other, an ageless, an eye-catching beast with an ugliness that wails, begging to be heard. She is a tale I cannot shake. She is the only voice I always hear. She is the only woman that will never leave. She is my addiction. Mm -hmm. That's a great one. I've been there. <laughs> You know, with a borderline personality disorder, uh, we kind of struggle a lot with relationships. And uh, I feel like I can relate to that a lot. You know, how we just kind of uh, pour everything that we are onto uh, the people that we are with. And it really hurts when they are. Uh, I'm here. My okay. <laughs> I was like, so oh. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So should I just move on to? I think this is my last one, unless there's some more uh, yeah. that I'm. Yeah. Okay. So this one is by a clumsy poet, and I was really excited to read this because it definitely sounds like something that I definitely would have written, and. Uh, made a video about or something <laughs> yeah. uh and her caption to this is it's high time we sensitize the subject of mental health issues and it starts with the way that we perceive it so here we go <laughs> yeah. ever stop ever stop to wonder in everyday conversations we often refer of mental disorders to describe our moods we criticize difficult people by calling them names like mental or psycho. We joke about admitting someone to a mental, mental hospital if they are being silly. We need to stop. Wanting to keep your things neat and tidy does not mean that you have OCD. Not unless you have a voice in your head telling you that you or, some, you or someone that you love will be in danger if you do not arrange your shoes in a straight line or switch off that light ten times before leaving the room or something like that you are not bipolar if you change your mind frequently it's feeling like there are two different personalities living within you and more often or not one of them makes you hate yourself for the things that the other does <clears throat> schizophrenia is not just imagining things that are unrealistic but not being able to differentiate that <laughs> between what is reality and what is imagined. Having such strong delusions and hallucinations triggered by a muddle of thoughts, images, and sounds so convincing that make you believe that the universe is against you. Social anxiety is not feeling, com is not feeling uncomfortable among strangers. It is feeling so suffocated and alone in a crowd that you can't breathe that you would rather lock yourself up than be in a place that you would get any sort of attention. Depression is not being upset about heartbreak or hating your job, but it is an everyday struggle to not to even get out of bed and do the things that you once used to love. It's losing appetite, sleep, concentration, and purpose in life. It's wanting to kill yourself, even though on the outside, you might have a perfectly balanced life. 
people who love you and the thousands of reasons why you should live. <clears throat> Mental disorders are not caused due to mood swings. They are caused due to the chemical reactions in your brain not happening the way that they should. While there are many different factors that can trigger a mental illness, such as biological, environmental, or heredity, the symptoms and treatments also vary from person to person. The good news is that like most other diseases, psychological disorders can also be cured either through psychotherapy or medication or both. The problem? We need to eliminate the stigma associated with mental illness and acknowledge that the mental well-being is as important as physical health and wellness. When someone tells you that they have a tumor, you don't ask why or how did they get it. You refer them to, the, to consult the best oncologist you have heard of. How many of us know the psychologist or the psychiatrist closest to our house? How many of us know the difference between them? The sad reality with our world these days is that there could be more lives lost due to depression than due to cancer. We all heard Chester Bennington wonder, why is everything so heavy? Or who cares if one more light goes out? We all screamed at our lungs, or we screamed our lungs out about becoming numb, so numb and tired. We all poured our hearts out singing, waiting for the end, but no one, not even his close friends and family or millions of fans in the world could even think that he would end his life. If only we could tell him that in the end, it did matter. So next time you think someone is mental, think again. Do you, or yeah, do they need your taunts or do they need help? Yeah, like that's totally something that I would post. <laughs> That. So good on you. It's so real. It's true. It's so good. Mm -hmm. That so sad. past year. Oh my fucking god. Mm. Oh my god. Um. I. Yeah. When he mm. took his life, I fell down into a pretty deep spiral. Mm -hmm. Like. I think like a lot, a lot of people really close to hope. <laughs> yeah, that like when they did his memorial service, I sobbed through the entire mm -hmm. fucking memorial live stream. Oh, mm -hmm. It's sad, and I know I've seen like pictures and videos of him like days before, and it's just. It's heartbreaking, but it's definitely somewhere that I've been way more times than I would like to admit that I have. Yeah. And it's definitely like in, like it says in this piece of art here that uh, we need to destroy that stigma so that people get it, <laughs> you know? Yeah. Because it sucks exactly. opening up and being it being shoved under the rug or ignored, and, you know? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so we have about five more minutes. Last remarks. What did you think about this? I thought it was awesome. Uh, again, thank you so much for letting me join. Uh, all of these pieces were amazing. Uh, I'm so happy to have met you. Um, I think that we do need to do way more of these lives, whether it's a uh, Mental Health Awareness Month or week or not. <laughs> yeah. Um, but yeah, I had a good time. Again, thank you for inviting me to, to do this with you. What you're doing is absolutely wonderful. <laughs> oh, thank you. Um, I have yet to determine what my future holds. Given that I am here for the indefinite future. <laughs> I have no <laughs> idea what the fuck I'm doing. Um, but yeah, um, I'll talk to Andy and see if we can do more of these mental, mental health lives. Um, mm -hmm. But yeah, it's really great to talk about this and to share poetry and work that addresses the very real things that I think we have all mm -hmm. felt at times. Mm -hmm. um, and making, I guess, what I would say is the louder, the more we talk about it, and the louder we speak about it, the smaller shame gets. 
Exactly. That's exactly what it is, right? We need to have those honest, ugly conversations. And yeah. But again, thank you so much for letting me join. And yeah, I hope that you have a wonderful night. And thank you guys for joining too. Everybody yeah. that's down there, I, I suck <laughs> at keeping up with the, the comments and stuff. <laughs> yeah. I got it. Sort of it. But it was so good to meet you. And um, yeah, stay safe. Yeah, we'll chat again soon, okay? Yeah, sounds good. Bye. Bye. No fucking time for bullshit.